Welcome to Dub Nation, your hub for everything Utah Warriors of Major League Rugby. Comment, like, and share the Warriors uh, Dub Nation uh, show here on Facebook. I'm Jeremy Jordan alongside Banksy, and guess what? We made it to 2021. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, and we have rugby in two months from now. Let's go. So excited to say this because, you know, for the longest time now, for over 10 months, we've been saying, I can't wait till next year. I can't wait till next year. Now here we are saying, this year, we get to see rugby in person. Yeah, and we need this, given how everything's gone the last 10 months, but I'm looking really uh, forward to it. And it's another position preview. We did uh, the props. We're going to talk about uh, the Utah Warriors hookers and locks today. We'll chat with Sama Malolo and Matt Jensen. Can't wait for that. But first, two truths and a lie. If you've been following the Warriors uh, at Warriors Rugby uh, UT on Twitter, uh, with prop Angus McClellan, these have been going out. I love these. Okay, ABC, which of these is a lie? A, he can play the violin proficiently. B, his favorite subject in school was physics. And C, he wasn't born in the U.S. Which one was it? Well, considering that uh, it's common knowledge uh, across the globe from the northern to the southern hemisphere that uh, front rowers are incredibly intelligent, uh, incredibly handsome, incredibly well-read, well-educated, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he really was uh, in the physics. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Or that uh, he was incredibly talented artistically and plays the violin. So I'm going to go with wasn't born in the U.S. C is true. He was born in Michigan. So it's B, it's physics. Dang. And he plays, he plays the violin professionally. How about that? That's pretty awesome. So much talent on this team, not only uh, on the pitch, but off it for sure, right? Okay, so let's continue our position previews with the uh, number two jersey, the hooker. It's two-man position with... Uh, uh, Ratu uh, Vermaula Vungakoto, a.k.a. Tuvere, uh, the Fijian international and former Australian U-20 international, Sama Malolo. What do you think of those two guys at that, that position? I think that the contrasting styles between the two, uh, with uh, two being very good at the set piece and being a big physical presence, and then when you turn over and, uh, and you look at Sama, the ability for him to play with the ball in hand and really play in the open field whether we've got one or the other, they've got strengths to lean on and build from that really are a, a wealth of talent in the number two jersey. And then we've got somebody like Mike Payne, who's probably going to see some time in that number two jersey as well as he learns the position. You couldn't ask for better teachers than than to have uh, those two guys there in front of you. Yeah, Mike Payne, one of those selects players kind of coming through that pathway, which is great. One of the potential future hookers. I, I love it. Okay, let's continue our hooker preview. Let's get to know Sama Malolo. All right, Sama, welcome to uh, Dub Nation. Great to have you all the way from Sydney, Australia, man. Yeah, bro. Good to be here, bro. It's been, a, it's been a minute since I've been home back in Utah, so it's good to catch up on. Yeah, and we can't wait for you and the rest of the gang to get into town uh, internationally. But tell us a little bit about uh, how life's going right now in, in Sydney and uh, kind of where you grew up and, and what role Sydney played in your life. Yeah, bro, for sure. Um, yeah, so I came back home uh, probably last April, just after the season got uh, suspended, which is pretty unfortunate for a lot of the boys. But um, yeah, just came back home, uh, started playing a bit of code here just to keep your you know match fitness up. And uh, Sydney's kind of been home for the past nine years. So I uh, grew up in New Zealand, but didn't really start playing my footy so until I moved to Sydney. So yeah, Sydney's home for me. Yeah, pretty much, man. Uh, like I, I remember probably... I played uh, my first game in Mount Wellington Juniors probably when I was about six or seven or something like that. And I just remember as I was playing this game, it was real, real vague. But I remember like putting my knee in someone's nose and this poor kid, you know, his nose is just bleeding and he's crying on the floor. And I just looked at him and just felt bad for the bike. And I was like, yeah, nah, sport's probably not for me. So, uh, yeah, bro, like since then, haven't really played much. So I moved here to Australia, um, did my first trial which is for, like, New South Wales Sevens. Um, and that was when I was about 15, 16. And then, uh, yeah, obviously, like, being a front rower, you're not really built for Sevens, but I thought I'd give it a go anyway. And, uh, yeah, cake the trial, but that's kind of how the ball started rolling. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, bro, like, I just trialed for all these teams when I was young, maybe about, like, 16 years old, trialed for all these teams and started making some representative teams, which is pretty cool. And that's when I started to get the gist, you know, like, I started to enjoy the sport. It's provided me with a bit of opportunity to go to certain places that I never thought I would have. And then, um, yeah, just every opportunity that's come, just kind of just grabbed it with both hands. So it's been pretty good. What was um, the sport of choice before you started playing rugby? Oh, bro, you'd, you'd, you'd laugh. Um, I played basketball. 
And like, you yeah, baby. Kind of fun roll. Yeah, that's the one, bro. Like, uh, you know, I was, a, I was a chubby little island kid, you know, I had no handle. Uh, just a big, <laughs> big unit, big Chevy. And uh, I thought, you know, the dream was to play in the NBA. But then, you know, once my growth stopped, you know, and uh, I just seen like everyone else around me, you know, um, bro, like Islanders, you know, you grow up real, real fast, real young. And then the rest of the, you know, ethnicities just grow up past you. And so I played uh, Power Forward Centre growing up. Um, and then, yeah, I like, played, played against, um, like, there were, there were some guys, one of them ended up getting drafted to the NBA, um, played for Utah for a little bit, uh, Dante Exum. So he was down here in Australia. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Went to, like, Nationals and that. And then, um, yeah, like, I stuck it out, Power Forward Centre, and then they tried moving me to small forward, you know, and then tries playing the guards, but I'm just too slow to play there, so... It's the yeah, great story not. of every front row, bro, with all that's, the good intentions, the, the height is there, and then you start growing this way. Yeah, this way, yeah, bro. Everybody that's, that's starts one, catching bro. up. Yeah, no, 100%. <laughs> no, like, slight difference in that story. I was always kind of growing this way, you know, but I was growing that way at the same time. But, um, yeah, so that was, like, roughly the same time I, I decided to give rugby a crack, and, you know, like, rugby's pretty much been, you know, one of those things. It's uh, always been in the culture back in New Zealand. And, you know, if you move from New Zealand to Australia, they'll be like, oh, what school do you go to? You'll be like, oh, Auckland Grammar. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, first 15, you know, like even though you never play rugby before, you know, it's just like <laughs> there's a preconception. If you're Kiwi, it means you're good at rugby. So I kind of just, you know, faked it till I made it and then, you know, just kept at it. And, yeah, but who would think, you know, four or five years down the track, I'll be playing in Utah, you know, like with Dub Nation. So, nah, it's been well, pretty good, man. I first started playing, you know, like back row. Um, played a couple of games for my school here in Sydney, Sydney Boys High, when I was playing uh, like under 15s and stuff. And a couple of games they put me at centre, but you know, like never really found my my position. And then when I started trialling for school boys, they said, you know, you should try front row. So um, I tried tried front row, played prop. Um, that's where I did my school boy stuff. And then uh, literally, like when I came back to playing club rugby, they were short on hookers, so they thought, you know, do you want to give hooker a try? Blah blah blah. And by then, I was kind of set in stone. You know, I was a prop, and I was happy to be a prop. And, um, you know, it's one of those things where you just you just sit back, and it's, there's an opportunity here. Like, you can either be set in your ways and, and do something or try and learn how to be an adaptable human being and go where the opportunity lies. So, yeah, like, there was a bit of a funny story behind that. I played footy with my brother at the time, and I just remember complaining about playing hooker. Like, it's not my position. I don't, I don't like this position. Like, I can't throw to save my life. And, um... My brother gave me this tough talk. We ended up having a fight, and yeah, like I came off, I came off second best, and I'm just sitting in the. I, I fell through a shower screen. He just threw me through the shower screen, so I got like, this is before a footy game too. I remember this now, and um, yeah, fell through the shower screen, and you know, afterwards, you know, me and my brother make up and all that kind of stuff. And pretty much since there, I was kind of like, yeah, maybe you should just you know take the advice that people give you and 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 just roll with it. So yeah, one of those things, man. Like you only find your way as you get older in rugby and. That's that's kind of the the pathway that I ended up following, and yeah, once I learned to own it, bro, I just never really looked back. Hey, eh? so if we need to convince you of something, we'll just throw you into the shower. That's that's one that's one, bro. Like if, um, <laughs> if there's a disagreement with me and the team, and you see that shower screen roll up in training, then I'm gonna be like, oh, okay, maybe uh, <laughs> maybe I should take these guys' advice. So yeah, that's, yeah keep that that's in mind. Funny. Yeah, we're talking with Stephen Adams. I mean, Sama Malolo uh, from uh, Sydney, <laughs> Australia. Can tell us about you. Can you tell us about your path from, uh, like you talked about, representative and provincial level to getting to uh, a guy that uh, has been able to play professionally all over the place, right? Super rugby and now major league rugby and whatnot. Tell us about kind of your yeah. journey in rugby. Um. Yeah, so my journey in rugby probably started in my like uh, in year twelve, which would be equivalent to senior year in the states. Um, I had trials for you know the Aussie schoolboys team, and then you go through the whole process, and it was kind of like um, one of those stories, man. I, I felt like I was a writer from the get go. Like so, before you have your New South Wales squad, you've got your you know your schools association squad, and um, I, I was in the second division team as a reserve in the um in our schools association so i was competing against probably like just in that small competition i reckon a good you know like 20 to 40 guys in my position just for you know one or two spots in, in these new south wales teams and um yeah i just remember you know like i kind of had a nothing to lose mindset and uh i went from playing in that second division team 
uh, off the bench to starting for the first division team uh, a couple of games later. And then at the end of that carnival, got selected in the New South Wales second division team on the bench. Um, and then went from there to playing in the Australian schoolboy second division team off the bench. Um, so it was kind of like I never really expected to get that far. But there was that realisation that, you know, there could be something special going on here. Um, and that's when, you know, all the, I don't know what you would call it, like, uh, my, you know, the, the details behind being a professional athlete kind of start to take its form. Um, I met, you know, I met my manager, Nathan, um, and he had a really good conversation with me and my mum, and he's been pretty close with my family since. And he's the guy that, you know, helped me to understand, you know, the opportunities that come with playing rugby. So, um, yeah, signed with him out of school and, and, and through our relationship and me playing club rugby back home, I was able to get a um, an academy contract with the Western Force in Perth. So that was uh, in 2017. And then played in a, went from there to playing in a competition, which is, a, it's Australia's provincial competition. So I don't know what you can compare that to in the States, but it's uh, it's called NRC, which is similar to like the ITM Cup in New Zealand, um, et cetera. And um yeah, uh, they, they gave me an opportunity to have a run there. And pretty much from the back end of the NRC season, I signed my first Super Rugby contract with uh, the Melbourne Rebels. And um, that's when, you know, like you get, you're moving into deep water and everything's just progressively growing. And uh, we all go through our journeys, man. Like um, going through Melbourne Rebels, being a young kid, you know, like you face the, the challenges of, you know, like all the head noise and, and the anxiety that comes with, with playing in those sports and competing against guys that you know have been, you know, brought up and bred for this game, you know. And, like, being a kid, it was kind of like, oh, I only just found my way a bit later. You know, like, you, you tend to, to struggle with a lot of that. But with that struggle came, you know, a lot of learning. Um, and so, yeah, at the back into that um, Super Rugby super rugby season, um, got the opportunity, you know, to travel. Um, in, in those two years, I played, uh, went to two World Cups with the Australian side. Uh, under 20 side, um, which was an awesome opportunity too. And I just started to realize, man, that, you know, one of the one of the great things about playing rugby is that it's a global sport and you can go to many different countries and, and you know, learn from many different people and have, you know, great friendships from, from other guys. And I kid you not, man, like when I moved over to Utah, I was like, yo, you know, like this is <laughs> this is what it's about, you know, like. Little boy from from Auckland, you know, gets to go to an aquarium for free in Utah and meet all these cool people, bro. I was like, yo, (laughs) this is the one, you know. Talk Um, about that attitude, though, because you go through that whole journey and it's kind of that, that, you know, the the Kiwis and Aussies both share the sentiment. You know, it's always and it doesn't matter what it is or where you are. The the sentiment is always, yeah, I'm up for it. You know, and it's just, you know, you 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 want to give it a go and it doesn't matter what you're doing or where you are. You know, you want to go jump off the rocks down the beach with your friends? Yeah, I'm up for it. You want to go trials for the under-20 Aussie side? Yeah, I'm up for it. Talk about bringing that attitude now to the Utah Warriors and this forward pack that has that I'm up for it attitude. Um, Bro, you should have seen that last game last year against Seattle, the reigning champs. Um, Bro, I don't know if if you guys remember, but man, I still remember it like it was yesterday, bro, and... You know, like in training, it's always about you know just boys just giving it a crack. You know, like if you got a if you got a prop that wants to throw like like KT last year wants to throw a behind the back pass. You know, like <laughs> yeah, I'm up for it, bro. You know what I mean? Like we'll be there. So you know, every you know like every scrum, you know, got a few scrum penalties there. And these are these are against good props. Um, the Seattle Tighthead, he was actually my teammate back here in Sydney, Tim Match. So uh, we played together. We just played. We just finished the season at Shoot Shield last year, uh, playing together. He was our captain down here. So. He's a quality prop. He's a super rugby boy as well. And, um, you know, we just we just had this mentality like, uh, yeah, in Australia, we call it, you know, giving it a crack, you know. We're just yeah. going to, like, have a dig, just give it a crack. And, yeah, bro, like, it's, it's something special when, when boys, you know, don't have that hesitation. And I think, you know, like, moving forward with this year, if we can just instill that in, in a lot of these boys, because you see in training, you know, like, they do stuff. But, you know, the only difference between training and games is that, um, you know, from a player's perspective, it's just that pressure's turned on just a little bit more. May 2nd, that's when uh, the Warriors play Seattle for the first time at yeah. Starfire. That, that'll be fun. Uh, we're talking with Sama Malolo, a future NBL 
backcourt made of Joe Ingles in the future. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, that, that should be fun. Let's, let's uh, preview the hookers. We've been talking about uh, position previews before the season. So you and Tuvede, just a nice combination of two guys with international experience, great experience, obviously, all over the place. So what's it like to be a fellow hooker with him as you guys kind of anchor that position? Yeah, bro. It's um, what's good about what's good about me and T is like we've, we've got different playing styles, you know. And it's it's not you know like one one after the other. And you know, T obviously like he's real good at set piece. We can learn off each other, you know. And um, what I found with working with T, you know, being the guy that he is, and for anyone that knows T, he's probably one of the most humble guys that you meet. Um, he's always willing to just you know say yes, offer that advice. Um. You know, like and, and help you out any way that he can. And so I've been doing I've been doing the same thing. Like it's good to have a relationship with someone in the same position as you where you can be like, Oh, like, what's this? What's that? How do I do this? Catch me up to speed. I remember when I first came down, um, first day, uh, first training, um, I literally just went to tea and we just had a sit down and he just caught me up to speed with practically everything. And I think in regards to team culture and what we're building as a team. And also on top of that, you know, like versatility of, of, of players and, and the kind of variety that we have, um, that that part's just so crucial. Um, I think, you know, the relationship that, that T and I have, um, especially with everything that went down in, in, in Fiji just recently, um, I think it's, it's really important that, you know, like we we look out for each other and we help each other as teammates, but, but, but also as blokes because, you know, T got married and, and then he, he's got a kid too. So um, I think just, just helping out each other's well-being yeah, it's, it's good, you know, we'll transfer over to, to us getting, you know, the dub on field, but it also, you know, transfer, you know, like that quality relationship between human beings. And like I said, bro, like that's probably one of the, you know, the benefits of, of playing rugby internationally, you know. Sama, this has been fun. Uh, we really look forward to when we can get back together in the same place and watch you guys train and get ready for the season, which is just two months away. So uh, mm. we appreciate it and uh, best of luck in Sydney. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Nah, cheers, guys. Appreciate it. See you guys in a bit. So good to hear some of those stories from Sama. If you want to get hooked up, Dub Nation, with your Utah Warriors gear right now, there's a special going down online. If you buy your 2021 jersey, you're going to get the 2020 kit at 50% off. Just go to therugbyshop.com and use promo code UWJerseyJanuary when you check out. That's UW jersey january you get the 2021 kit i highly recommend you buy the best looking kit in major league rugby and that red away utah warriors kit and you'll get the 2020 kit at 50 percent off right now i don't often wear red but it's warriors red that i wear and i love it okay let's talk about the locks fours and fives punavili matt jensen matt dalton are listed at four tyohila and as to four at five interchangeable right those uh that seems like a position of strength in the second row we really like the props a lot but uh, Hooker strong, and now the locks have some depth and more than they've had. We've had great players in great positions, but we haven't been deep at those positions. When you look two, three, and even the fourth guy up, where you know you get ten games into a season now, and these injuries start to pile up, you don't want to lose quality as you go through. We had Matt and Saya in the first couple of years, and those guys put on a lot of miles and a lot of minutes on the field. So to have somebody like Austin Fortine that can come in. To have somebody um, like Big Matty coming in from Ireland that can be able to fill in those positions and even bring their own assets to those positions in that Warriors engine room, in that type five, is going to be fantastic. For fans that don't know what the lock position is, when you look at the front row, we talked about the props last week. Your tight head prop on the right side and your loose head prop on the left side. The hooker is the guy in the middle on the front row. The locks are the two positions that go right in between them in that they make up the type five. So when you watch the Warriors scrum, that's who we're looking at are these guys here in that typically we call it the second row. Um, and those guys are the physical workhorses. They do the stuff that doesn't show up on the worksheet. Those are your enforcers. Those are your guys cleaning out the rocks, making the hard tackles, doing the dirty stuff in the big pileups. So to have guys that can be that strength in your team, five players deep, and maybe even move some of those guys into like a loose forward position is unbelievable when you think about the versatility that we now have with the Utah Warriors. Because we know what we're getting, and it's really good play and experience from Matt Jensen and Sayu Hila, who have really carried this position the last uh, three years. Now you bring in Matt Dalton, an Ireland U20 international. Aston uh, Fortine, as you mentioned, from South Africa with Southern Kings Pro 14 experience. 
all of a sudden you've got depth and Matt Jensen may not have to go 80 minutes every week and may not have to play every week, which is probably good in the long run for him and the team. As, as a forward, I mean, you want to have those replacements be able to come in. You know, you're usually looking at one replacement at second row. So one of those guys is going to go 80 minutes and you might get a replacement in there for another guy that can maybe go 60 and then know that those final 20 minutes, you've got a guy that can bring quality and energy off the bench for you and be able to be a real difference maker in that final 20 minutes to close out games. And uh, let's learn more about the position and what you were talking about and how much uh, the depth will play into his role. The one and only Matt Jensen. Two months to the season. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Obviously, you're kind of representing the locks here in our position preview, which is fun. But uh, how are things going generally? Because it's been, I don't know, 10 months since the Warriors have played. But uh, the season will be here before we know it, right? Yeah, no, it's been going for a good new baby. So that's been different. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. How's the sleep? <laughs> uh, honestly, really good. He's been a great baby. So no complaints. That's well, awesome. And is it first first kid, second kid? First kid, yep. Congratulations. That's exciting. Uh, and and you only Warriors do that once. Bottles, there's several that have had babies in this in this downtime. <laughs> <laughs> Those COVID kids, man. Those COVID kids. So uh, obviously new baby is a big deal, but uh, how's, how's the uh, day job going? And tell people kind of where you work and what you do during the day. Yeah, so I work for Big D Construction. Um, I'm an office guy. Uh, it's been going really good. We're busier than ever. So that's been really nice. And, um, just keep them busy. You're one of those local guys that has been able to, to kind of come up here in Utah, starting really through the college ranks as you came out from the East coast and, you know, started playing ball in college there. And then we're able to really just stay home. Don't skip over the BYU Utah park. <laughs> skip over the BYU park. Come on, man. I'm going to fight you, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about playing in college at BYU and then being able to stay here and play up through the Utah Warriors to now you being one of those guys that could be one of the first to look at 200 caps for Dub Nation here, brother. 200? Jeez, let's get to 50 first. Is that where we're at? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not counting. But, like, but you're, I say that because you're one of those guys that every game, every sheet, you see it there in the type five. Matt Jensen's got his name on the sheet. Like the amount of minutes that you've been able to put into this club in that, you know, engine room of the, the, the Warriors forward pack has been impressive with that longevity, brother. Yeah. It, I mean, it's been a blessing staying healthy and stuff too. Um, but yeah, it's been a, it's been a wild ride. It's been a lot of fun. I never thought I'd be playing rugby still at this point. Uh, after BYU, I thought I was done. And then Kimball called me, I think it was the week before our season ended. And he's like, hey, you know, we're starting up this little thing. I remember him calling it a little thing. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Here we are, four years later. So, Yeah, this little thing has grown quite a bit, right? Um, so yeah. rewind us back before I rudely interrupted Banksy uh, <laughs> about – Growing up in Pennsylvania, and then uh, kind of when you started playing rugby and your pathway to this point. Whew. Uh, so the short story, um, I had no idea what rugby was when I lived back east. Um, I ran into Larry Gelwix, the coach for Highland Rugby, um, back east, and I happened to be moving to Utah, and he handed me his business card and said, welcome to Highland Rugby. And uh, <laughs> I'd never watched a game. I had no idea what any of it was. Um, showed up to practice two weeks later, and the rest is history. I mean, I fell in love with it. Uh, I did play a year of football at BYU. I thought that was the route I was going to take. Uh, did not have a good experience with that. <laughs> and so I decided to switch back to, to rugby and uh, played four years at BYU, and it was awesome. So. so talk about your partnerships now in in the in the forward pack, but specifically with the type five, because there really is a different mentality in playing with that front row and with your with your locking partner. Um, do you have a preference for the tight head side or the loose head side when you play? Do you care whether you're in the four or the five? Uh, it depends on which ear hurts more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it also 
depends who's, uh, who's playing uh, who's playing prop because some of them have uh, softer hips. We'll say uh, <laughs> <laughs> I won't name any names, but not uh, nice yeah. to talk about Gus and Franco that way. I'm not gonna <laughs> that, okay? They've got sensitive emotions that you're toying with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I look at the four and the five, and I just see loads of talent here. So let's walk through who's in there. Punavili, you, Matt Dalton, new Irishman coming over, young talent. Sai Uhila, who feels like he's been with the club 12 years. It's just the fourth <laughs> year. You and, and him have been this awesome pairing. And then uh, Aston Fortuin, who is a international from South Africa, coming in as well. This feels like a great group where maybe in the past it felt like you and Sila perhaps had to carry this from a leadership standpoint and talent standpoint. This is, there's a lot of talent there where if, if uh, you know, it's, it's one guy's w one week, it's his week, and that's okay. Yeah, no, it's really cool coming into the season, seeing this much depth, because, you know, past seasons, like you said, the name comes up on the depth chart every week, and it's, it, you know, it wasn't a lot of surprise because there wasn't a lot of depth. <laughs> and, there was, and you were going 80 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Do it. No matter what, you, you got hurt, you got a, a stinger in your shoulder or something, you're not coming out. It's the full 80. So um, it's really cool seeing seeing this new new talent coming in because, you know, it's been pushing me a lot more in the offseason because, you know, I don't want to be the old guy that's starting to shift to the bench, you know. So <laughs> well, I know just you've, been hitting the, you've been hitting the gym a bunch, too. I know you, you put on a lot of muscle weight. How's that fitness now between you and the other boys as we gear up now here really? 60 days and change out yeah so i've been working out mostly on my own um just because of work commitments but you know the charts and stuff that matt sends out i think i'm in a really good spot this is the fittest i've felt coming into a season um matt madison has done an incredible job getting the boys ready i mean that dude knows his stuff and he's really been putting us through putting us through the ringer with these workouts <laughs> Let's talk about uh, some of your off the pitch hobbies as we try and get to know you. What, what do you like to do? What are you What are you good at? Oh boy, uh, I love hiking. I do a lot of hiking when I can. Um, I really like woodworking. Unfortunately, that's a very expensive hobby. <laughs> but I have you the... made your own cabinets or coffee tables or anything like that? Chairs? Oh yeah, I've made all sorts of stuff. Um, I think currently all we've kept so far. Everything else we've sold, our dining room table is the only one left because we're not living in a very big place. So. <laughs> but So yeah. let me put this out there then for you as a hypothetical question. Uh, you've got to survive in the wilderness for seven days with two of your teammates. Who are you taking with you? Ooh. Uh, well, John Cullen's gone. He would have been. <laughs> <laughs> right, with, his, with his special forces training and his army experience right that would have been a guy. he's out he's he's you know he's moved now uh whew. let's go with let's go with danny he wouldn't consume a lot of calories uh so <laughs> <laughs> and uh he's getting eaten first by a bear <laughs> <laughs> he's faster than i am so he doesn't have that's to worry true. About that's, that's true uh let's see Man, who else did I bring with me? Probably Gus. I've been done a lot of outdoor stuff with Gus. We've been backpacking and stuff together. I know I can trust him out there. So there you go. <laughs> and as we learned earlier in the show, he plays the violin proficiently. How about that? So he could yeah. he could summon food in some way if he brought it or scare the mind. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I said this before with Sama, and I'm gonna say it again now. This should not be a surprise to anybody because forwards are the most talented intelligent, handsome looking players on the rugby field, especially the lower your number gets as you get into five, four, three, two, one. Everybody knows that that's, Blast where, stuff. that's really yeah. where the, the, the Da Vinci's and the, the great minds of, of rugby exist. One of our big focuses going in last year was becoming a cohesive unit. Um, you know, we do have a really diverse team with a lot of different cultures and languages and backgrounds and and so I think we've been trying really hard to, to mesh all that together. And I, I think that focus has, has really helped out. You know, it's, it's been a very uh, team first mentality in the forwards pack. You know, one of us scores, all of us scores. Um, and so just focusing on that stuff, I think has been a huge, huge asset to us. 
What's your favorite and least favorite thing about being uh, lifted up in a lineup? Oh, um, favorite. I mean, it feels cool. You're just getting thrown in the air at 270 pounds. It's not a lot of people get to say they, they do that. <laughs> uh, the worst part is when you go to work the next day and your coworkers are asking you what it's like to be a cheerleader. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> Tell them to come say that to a 300 pound prop the next morning and see how long that conversation lasts. <laughs> but your skills and your hands in the air have been a constant asset for this team. Even when things weren't always going our way at the set piece, your experience at that jumping position and uh, as well as you know your physical attributes as a lock were always something that I felt like we could rely on as we watched what unfolded on the field. That's got to be a pretty uh, pretty big point of, of uh of positivity for you yeah i mean line outs and stuff it's always something i've really enjoyed um obviously it's a huge part of my game um and when you go into it just enjoying it and relax you know you take the pressure off yourself and and it helps being able to to execute so. well awesome matt we're uh we're stoked about this team the locks have a ton of talent as we talked about and uh you're, in, you're you're pursuing 200 caps. Let's get to 50 first, as we talked about. But Matt, we <laughs> people we appreciate realize how time, many Matt. caps 200 caps really is in rugby. That's a lot of rugby. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of joint pain. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of cheerleading, as that uh, weirdo from work said. Yeah, exactly. Well, Matt, thanks for the time, man. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, guys. Always good to hear from one of our senior statesmen at the Utah Warriors with Matt Jensen. If you want to see Matt and all of Dub Nation in action, the best deal on your seats and really the only way to guarantee your seats when we start playing rugby again is to get your season tickets. Go to warriorsrugby.com slash season tickets and get yours now so you can select your seats and be in when we kick off at Zions Bank Stadium for Utah Warriors rugby. It's going to be fun, and we're getting to know this team even more than we already knew it through uh, the shows. We previewed already the props and now the hookers and the locks. We're going to, uh, in two weeks, preview some more of the forwards uh, with the flankers and the number eight position. So I love it. We're going to wrap up our forward preview. And like you mentioned, Becky, I think this is a position of strength. It was already a pretty good place, but it's going to be very good to great this season. We saw what greatness this forward pack was capable of in the latter half of the of- last season before we got cut short, the things that they were able to do uh, from the line out and the mall to the way that our forwards were able to play with the ball in hand from sideline to sideline. Expect great things from jersey number one all the way through jersey number eight with 2022 here and uh, 2021 and 2022 but with the Utah Warriors. Well, can't wait for it. About two months out, that'll do it for us. For Sama Malolo all the way from Sydney, Matt Jensen here locally, Billy the producer, Banksy. I'm Jerem Jordan. Go Warriors!